In a trial that made national headlines and highlighted the difficulties of holding law enforcement officers accountable, it was Bordentown police officers themselves who turned over evidence against their own police chief. In a rare move, he's been tried for federal hate crimes. Brianna Venosi reports on the trial itself and the long history that led up to it. Brianna? Yeah, Mary Alice, the jury deliberated for more than 45 hours over the course of eight days, but in the end, they failed to reach a verdict on two hate crime-related charges, and those carried the most serious penalties against former Bordentown Township Police Chief Frank Nussera. The same jury did, however, find him guilty on a separate count of lying to the FBI about the case. The jury was made up of 12 members, nine white and three black. Nussera was accused of assaulting a handcuffed black teenager, Timothy Stroy, and denying his civil rights during a 2016 police call at the Bordentown Ramada Inn. Now, federal prosecutors allege Nussera was motivated by racial hatred when he grabbed the 18-year-old's head and allegedly smashed it into a door jam. Nussera denies committing the assault. But authorities allege the 62-year-old has a long history of making racist and violent comments. He spent 34 years on the force before retiring in 2017 amid the allegations. And this all came to light because his own rank-and-file officers were so bothered by his behavior, they began secretly recording the former chief. The key witness, Sergeant Nathan Rohr, a K-9 officer in the unit, made 81 recordings over the course of a year. This is just a sample of some of the quotes from the transcript. In November 2015, Nussara referred to an African-American man he suspected of slashing the tires of a police vehicle, allegedly saying, quote, these N-blank are like ISIS. They have no value. They should line them all up and mow them down. I'd like to be on the firing squad. I could do it. Then, leading up to the 2016 presidential election, he called Donald Trump, quote, the last hope for white people. Now, these were just a few out of the many hours of recordings made by Rohr, who also testified that he witnessed Nussara hitting the teen during that 2016 call. It's important to note this is not the first nor the second time allegations of racial hatred and excessive force have been raised against the former police chief, and not the first time his own officers made secret recordings that were handed over to authorities. Ultimately, though, no charges were ever brought. Bordentown is a small community. It's predominantly white, and it sits just south of Trenton. Nussara allegedly made many racial slurs over his decades on the force about black Trenton residents. He was also investigated in a billing fraud probe back in the mid-2000s. Now, here's Nussara's attorney immediately after the trial ended. I respect their, their process, and I know they worked hard, so we're, we're glad uh, that we got a mistrial on those two most serious counts. Mr. Nussera has always, you know, regretted making those statements, as I told the jury. Uh, they're, they're not pleasant comments, certainly. They're ugly, ugly and embarrassing comments. There's been a lot of questions about Nussera's nearly $9,000 a month pension. It was frozen after he was charged. A spokesperson for the state treasury department told members of the media that any decision would be made at the next monthly board meeting for the pension fund. Nussera faces up to five years in prison on the charges of lying to the FBI. Prosecutors immediately said they'll seek a retrial on the other two counts, which carry up to 20 years total. And Mary Alice, Bordentown is my hometown. I can tell you residents are deeply hurt and frankly outraged by the comments that were recorded and hope the department can get a fresh start. Nussara is scheduled to be sentenced on February 6th.